Hi, this is Greg Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's get started with the next video. In this video, we're going to talk all about hybridization and how that affects structure, hybrid orbitals and molecular shapes in organic chemistry. So when we think about organic molecules, here's an example of the simplest of the organic hydrocarbons, methane. And you can see that the structure in three dimensions is of a tetrahedron. You have a carbon surrounded by four atoms that is uh, completely symmetric in which the bonds to the hydrogens are splayed out as far apart as possible around that carbon ring. In this case, it means that bond angles between any carbon-hydrogen bond and another carbon-hydrogen bond are all 109.5 degrees, a perfect tetrahedral. So you can see here in all these cases, each bond would be 109.5 degrees. Uh, so this structure of methane, the question is can this be explained by what we know about atomic structure and the shapes of orbitals and how they overlap? In fact it doesn't. Um, if you think about all of the um, structures, all of the orbitals around a carbon atom, uh, remember the electron configuration of carbon that we talked about previously. Uh, carbon has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2, 2p2, right? So that means in the valence shell there are four electrons. It needs four more electrons so it forms four covalent bonds. But the shapes of those orbitals don't really match with what we see for the shape of the carbon. If I were to think about two electrons in this s orbital in the valence shell, that should be roughly a spherical shape, correct? So if we think about a sphere as the s orbital with two electrons in it, okay? And then we have two p orbitals, um, actually three p orbitals that are dumbbell shaped. So if you think about uh, one p orbital in the direction aligned up and down on the screen, if you think about a second p orbital, that would be aligned uh, left and right. My p orbitals are nothing to write home about here. Um, and the third p orbital, that would be coming out towards you and then going away from you in the back, in the other direction. So in the x, y, and z directions, we have p orbitals. So how do we fill the electrons in the electron configuration? Well, we know that the two remaining electrons in the valence shell would go into sequential orbitals. So let's just put one in this orbital that I show green and then I'll put one in the orbital uh, that I've drawn as blue. Um, this remaining red o p orbital that I have indicated here would remain empty. If I were to take a hydrogen atom now with a 1s orbital and an electron to overlap that, what would that look like? Well, let's take a look. Um, if I have uh, a hydrogen atom with one electron in it, okay, and I overlap that with the green orbital, I could overlap that and make a covalent bond. So, oops, let me do that this way. Overlap that and make a covalent bond to a hydrogen. So now we have a shared bond with two electrons. And then I could take a second hydrogen atom and overlap it with this blue orbital uh, with its electron. And now we have, again, a covalent bond. Um, but there's no other way to put two other hydrogens to get CH4. This orbital is empty, and that's the only other orbital it can overlap with. We can't take a hydrogen atom and overlap it with the s orbital that's already filled. It already has two electrons. Besides that, um, these orbitals, x, y, and z orbitals, are all 90 degrees apart and thus it doesn't fit the shape, it doesn't match the shape of what we actually observe for the methane molecule. So how do we explain the shape of that molecule? Well one theory uh, that's uh, described in chemistry is called the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VSEPR. The valence shell electron pair repulsion theory says that um, all electrons in bonds and lone pairs repel each other and so that in order to achieve the lowest energy state they will move as far apart as possible and if you have four bonds in a tetrahedral those would be all 109 degrees apart uh, into a perfect tetrahedral. In fact that does provide one explanation uh, to rationalize the structure that we see for methane.
Okay, we see the same thing in water. In water, we see also a tetrahedral if we think about the bonds for the hydrogens as containing two electrons, and the bonds in the lone pairs also possessing electrons which repel each other. In this case, then, the bonds, the electrons in the bonds and the electrons in the lone pairs, they would all repel each other about 109 degrees. It's a little bit less be between the hydrogens because of uh, the extra atom there as opposed to a lone pair. The lone pair takes up slightly less space. But it roughly looks like the shape of the carbon atom in a tetrahedral when we consider the lone pairs as well. Of course, when we just look at the atoms here, two hydrogens and an oxygen atom, we would refer this to this as a bent shape um, because we're not showing the electrons that are up on the other side of that oxygen atom. So how is this achieved given that atomic orbitals have both s and p, orbitals that have very different shapes than what we actually observe in our molecules? Okay, so let's take a look at this electron configuration of a carbon atom. Uh, again, the valence shell has four electrons, two in the 2s orbital and two electrons in two different uh, 2p orbitals. And I've drawn this sort of showing the s is lower energy, the p's is higher energy, which is exactly what we uh, predict from atomic uh, orbital theory. So if you look at this, um, we need to somehow come up with four identical orbitals because that's what we see when we look at the methane molecule, four identical bonds, all spread out about 109 degrees. So in order to do that, uh, what's, what happens is that the molecule does what we call hybridization. What we do is we mix all of these four orbitals together, one part S and three part P, uh, and then and then equally divide them out. This is all done mathematically to describe the shapes. Equally divide them out into four identical orbitals. So what we see here is a hybrid orbital of the carbon, which we refer to as sp3. sp3 hybridization has four identical orbitals, each made up of one quarter s orbital and three quarters p orbital. So we call it sp3. That makes four identical orbitals, which are actually slightly dumbbell shaped, but we often refer to just the one main lobe of that. The other lobe that comes from the P character is very, very small and not involved in actually overlapping and bonding. It's the, the main lobe that you see here. So if we look at um, four hybrid orbitals and we spread them out into it as far apart as possible with electron repulsion, that described perfectly a hydrogen, uh, carbon with four identical orbitals, each with one electron in it, that then can overlap with a hydrogen atom, each with one electron in it, and that gives rise to our tetrahedral structure. So a methane, which has four separate single bonds to hydrogen, is a structure that is made up of hybrid orbitals from 1s and 3ps, which we call sp we can do that with other carbons as well. Carbon-carbon bonds can overlap. You can see in this picture that we've drawn the molecule ethane, which is C2H6. In the case that there is a overlapping of those hybrid orbitals in the middle, so you can see one of the hybrid orbitals of the carbon on the left overlapping with a hybrid orbital of the carbon on the right to connect them and make a covalent bond and share those two electrons. The other hybrid orbitals in each of the carbons then overlap with a hydrogen to make each carbon have four different bonds and all of them using a hybrid orbital made up again of one part S, three part P for each of those orbitals. So alkanes, in this case ethane, bonded together is hybridized in the sp3 hybridization state. So here's the structures of methane, ethane, and propane, and you can see covalent bonds by orbital overlaps of hybrid orbitals between the carbons and the hybrid orbitals of the carbons with different hydrogens. All of the carbons in these examples are sp3 hybridized, and we can make many, many different kinds of organic molecules by overlapping those hybrid orbitals to make carbon chains, branch chains, etc. And we'll talk a lot about structure when we talk about alkanes in chapter 3. So another thing we can have occur with 
carbons and other atoms is to have more than one bond between the atoms. That is, more than two electrons are shared, so each bond that's represented by multiple bonds here is two electrons. So one of these molecules that we represent with multiple bonds that can be seen here is carbon dioxide, CO2. The other is hydrogen cyanide. And you can see that that one has three bonds between the carbon and the nitrogen, so it has a triple bond. Now if you take a look at this, the structure of these are written in such a way to reflect their geometry. Both carbon dioxide and hydrogen cyanide are linear molecules, and so we have to think about orbital structures which give rise to that particular orientation of the group. So are they linear? Are they bent? What are the bond angles? Does that fit with the pictures that we have of our orbitals and how they overlap? In organic molecules we have double bonds and triple bonds between carbons. As you can see the top molecule ethylene has a flat structure where the CHCC bond angles are about 120 degrees. The triple bond between carbons give rise to a molecule called acetylene with H2C2, which is a linear structure. So notice when you have double bonds between carbons, we have a flat uh, bent structure, which is about 120 degrees between the angles. When we have a triple bond, we have linear structures with 180 degree bond angles between the CH bond versus the CC bond. So how do we explain this in terms of hybridization in orbital pictures. Well, uh, I talked about the fact that we can have carbon uh, with its valence shell having s and p orbitals and four electrons. In the atomic state that would be the case, but when they hybridize they mix together. In order to form a second bond between the carbons, we have to have an additional ability for orbitals to overlap. And we talked about um, the types of covalent bonds so far where the two orbitals overlap end to end. So if you think about an orbital with an electron overlapping with another orbital with an electron end to end. That would be a carbon-carbon single bond that I've just drawn. This would uh, be what we would call a sigma bond or a single bond. How do we get a second bond between the same two carbons? Well, there's no way we can overlap in the exact same space, so the only thing that we can do in this case is to leave one of the original atomic orbitals as a p orbital uh, and put it perpendicular to that bond. And I'm going to draw both lobes, one above and, and below, and let that orbital overlap side to side. That is what we refer to as a pi bond, and that would that uh, blue bond that I've just drawn, both above and below the plane of the carbons, is what we refer to as a pi bond. So this has two bonds, not three, the way it kind of looks. Um, all of the blue represents a side-to-side -side overlap, representing one bond. The red represents the other bond. Okay, so what happens when you do the hybridization? Well, instead of mixing together uh, one uh, S and three P's, we mix together one S and two P's and leave one P alone. And so we have what we refer to as SP2 hybridization. One S with two P's mixed together and then divided out into three orbitals and then one P orbital left unhybridized. So a carbon with a double bond, or that can still contains a p orbital on it, we refer to as a carbon with sp2 hybridization. So this is a better representation of a double bond within ethylene or ethene. This is a, the simplest of the double bond containing organic molecules with two carbons and four hydrogens. Notice that the structure of this is rather flat. So the carbon-carbon bond uh, between them is a, sig a sigma bond. We have a, a bonds coming out towards us to the hydrogens, and we have bonds going away from us to the hydrogens. So each of those carbons is attached to three different things. Those are all the hybrid orbitals. So these bonds are sigma bonds, all with hybrid orbitals from the carbon, or sp2. So there's an sp2 orbital. Here's an sp2 orbital from the carbon, and then here's an sp2 orbital from the carbon. The second bond in the double bond is represented by the lobes that I've shown here with a side-to-side -side overlap. This red and blue, that's all one bond because it's a p orbitals from both sides of 
the molecule that are overlapping side to side. So don't get confused by that. Um, that all represents just one additional bond between the carbons. The result is, in terms of the shape of the molecule, is that the carbons are all flat with 120 degrees between the angles, or the bonds. Okay, this is another representation showing uh, a pictorial map of the side-to-side -side overlap of p orbitals and also an electrostatic potential map. Notice on this electrostatic potential map which shows regions of negative charge indicated by red and positive charge indicated by blue. So you can see by the, the electrostatic potential map um, that there's a lot of negative charge on that pi bond of the double bond and that's where reactivity often happens. So what we see with the structure and the types of orbital overlaps that also relates to where electron density is and where we can predict future reactivity. Okay, let's talk about a triple bond. In order to get three bonds between the carbons, we have to be able to have two of those p orbital overlaps on each of the carbons so that we can get a third bond and that's perpendicular to the other pi bond. So if you look at this representation of acetylene or uh, ethyne, uh, what we see is that the molecule is completely linear. Notice on this uh, electrostatic potential map that there's a lot of electron density in this position. And you can look at the carbon uh, structure here where there's 180 degrees between the carbon-hydrogen bond and the carbon-carbon bond. That's 180 degrees apart. What that means is that there's a hybrid orbital overlapping with a hydrogen on one side and a hybrid orbital overlapping with another hybrid orbital of the carbon on the other side. So those are the hybrid orbitals that are overlapping. Um, but we still have to have the second and the third bonds between the carbons. We just described how that bonding can happen with a p orbital where you have a side to side overlap which I've indicated in yellow there. Let me clean this up for you. Um, and all we do is we have another p orbital which remains unhybridized which is now perpendicular to that p orbitals are 90 degrees apart so perpendicular to that where we have side to side overlap of those orbitals and that gives a picture something like what's shown down here um, that represents three bonds the remaining hybrid bonds, the CH bond and the CC bond, are made from orbitals which are hybridized, but only two. So guess what that would be? An sp hybrid orbital made up of one part s and one part p. Remember, when, we, when we're thinking about the mathematics of the atomic orbitals, we start with one s and three p's. We have to end up completely with four orbitals in the end. The ones that are hybridized are made up of an S and whatever P's you need, and then what remains unhybridized are P's. So if we take a look at the hybridization of um, a carbon atom into an SP hybridization, uh, the original atomic orbitals, 1S and 3P's, we mix together essentially two of them, leaving two P's unchanged. So this is made up of one part S and one part P. We get two identical SP hybrid orbitals and then two identical p orbitals left. That gives us rise to the structure that we see. So those those hybrid orbitals will be arranged 180 degrees apart because that's as far apart as they can be. Those are two different orbitals here, the hybrid orbitals. The uh, remaining p orbitals are then orthogonal to that, one in this direction and one coming out and going away from us. What we see in hybridization is that the molecules will try to adopt the most stable, uh, the most stable configuration and hybridize only what it needs to form the right overlaps. If in the only way to form a double or triple bond is to have one or two p orbitals remaining unhybridized, that would affect the hybridization of the rest of them and how they're displayed. So we display the hybrid orbitals as far apart as possible. So if there are four hybrid orbitals, sp3 hybridization. Um, they would be displayed in a tetrahedral arrangement. If there are three hybrid orbitals or sp2 with one p remaining, those three orbitals are representing a plane at 120 degrees apart like we see in ethene. Um, if it's two hybrid orbitals, 
that would be sp with two p orbitals remaining unhybridized, though these are displayed out 180 degrees apart because you take two, two bonds and you put them 180 degrees apart. That's how we think about the shapes related to the hybridization of the molecule. We'll talk about these more as we go on with specific examples throughout the semester.